what's going on everybody i'm dark hour 717 and i hope everybody has had an amazing week and thank you for joining me for this episode of the weekly news review for the week ending the 11th of june 2022 if you're new this is where we're going to go over the last week's news and information from around the star citizen universe this week of course we did get a decent amount of information we also have new events coming up over the next couple weeks i want to thank everybody though for checking it out and if you enjoy these updates then hit that subscribe button i would greatly appreciate it but also make sure you stick around to the end to find out how you can get entered for a chance to win an anvil legionnaire with lti this week we continue playing in patch 317.1 as we wait for the release of patch 317.2 but we do have the upcoming Alien Week to get through before we'll see the newest patch hit live. For all the new players out there who are asking what is Alien Week, it is much like the bigger Invictus celebration though highlights the Alien manufacturers specifically. This includes Apoa, Esperia, Banu, and Gaddock. I don't include the Vandal Scythe in this as it is a subscriber perk in the PU and had extremely limited sales when it was concepted. The week-long celebration is held yearly in conjunction with the First Contact Day celebration, which is held every year right around mid-June. The exact day First Contact was made according to lore was June 13, 2348, occurring when Vernon Tarr, who was out on an exploratory mission, encountered a fugitive Banu ship. Vernon first believed it was another exploration vehicle, but found that it was not and sent the coordinates to the UEE, which in turn sent a diplomatic team led by General Sokolovich to handle the discovery which led to the Banu Protectorate making formal contact two weeks later. And the following October, the Interstellar Peace and Trade Accord was signed between the two species. There is a fair amount of lore that can be found about the interaction between the Banu and the humans, and for those that enjoy the lore, I recommend checking it out. But what does this mean for the players and backers of Star Citizen? It means much like Invictus, we're going to see all the alien manufacturers on display and showing off all their vessels through the showrooms on Orson. The flyable ships are going to be rentable for free, and the concepted ships will be seen as hollow viewers. It also means that the sales are going to open up for all the alien ships flyable as well as under concept, and in some cases will also introduce a new ship into the mix, much like the Gaddock Railing was introduced last year. Also, you'll see a variety of war bonds as well as available CCUs to grab to acquire any alien ships that you've been wanting. This includes the Banu Merchantman, the Santokiai, the Banu Defender, the Gaddock Raylan, as well as the Asperia Talon, and so forth. This is really one of the few times when alien ships are available outside of the IAE in which they get showcased alongside all the other ships of the verse. The biggest difference with Alien Week is of course that there is no accompanying free fly event with it and its celebration is open to backers only. So get ready for an experience that will allow you to try all these ships with 48 hour free rentals and for those with ships already in mind you want to keep an eye out for a schedule to be released early this week for the event and the showroom availability. As mentioned we are still playing in patch 317.1 as we wait for 317.2 to come along. All players are still experiencing a number of ongoing bugs in the current patch. At this time we are still seeing that several players are experiencing issues that only a character reset will actually resolve. This includes missing ships, inability to claim ships that do show as claimable, and missing inventory items and AUEC, just to name a few. We also know that many issues have been going on with the character reset system, which has been forcing some to do multiple resets after waiting a 24-hour period. The reset itself has at times taken several hours to complete as well. And as of this time, no word on whether this has been addressed, but I did do a reset myself this morning, and I'm happy to say that it only took 20 minutes to complete and I had no issues or lost items after completion. So this could be a positive sign that it's on the mend. Though my one good experience does not mean it's completely fixed, currently it is really recommended that backers only reset if there's really no other option. When 317.2 does come in, we are hoping that we'll see a number of issues outside of character reset also get addressed. Though no update on what may end up on the bug fix list, what we are still commonly seeing in this patch is the elevator death ejection issue in which elevators on stations either kill or eject you out into space when waiting for them. You really just have to remember staying way back from the elevator door after you call it in until it arrives. Delivery missions have issues with being able to be completed with some in the org only being able to complete one out of five missions due to drop off markers and prompts no longer appearing or registering. Completion is not being detected or the package itself despawns. This was slowing or halting progression into the next higher tier of the mission loop with larger payouts. 
I have though experienced random explosions on a couple of ships, mostly my Anvil Pisces. And this has been occurring when just taking off from a pad with no obstructions or any other players in the area. It just went boom for no reason. The mole's extraction capabilities continue to be broken, rendering the mining vessel unable to collect its ore. It is also hit or miss whether the Idris will fire back at you when you're doing the Arlington Gang missions for Miles Eckhart. Actually, in that loop, there are other bounties that do not fire back as well, such as the Retaliator. And we're also experiencing issues with the friends list still in party creation and party launching issues from the main menus. As I mentioned last week, these are not game breaking huge issues outside of the mole's inability to function. And we've actually been able to work around them mostly. With a number of new items coming in with patch 317.2, I'm hoping that we see some of these issues get resolved and cleared up. The biggest help in this, of course, is in filing issue console reports on anything you do find or come across. And if there's already an existing report, contribute to it and help move that up the list of needed fixes. This does actually bring us into our regular forms of information for the week. To start with, as always on Monday, we got the This Week in Star Citizen, which gave us a link for the Bar Citizen World Tour com link, as well as a Spectrum thread for if you're not located near one of the studios where Bar Citizen is occurring, that you can make suggestions for future stops when they go on the road. Aside from that, we also got the standard items with the lore post, the roadmap roundup inside Star Citizen and Star Citizen Live. Tuesday did bring in the lore post, which was from the narrative team and was a portfolio on Brentworth Care Center. Founded by Jaleel Brentworth, the portfolio covers the circumstances in his life that persuaded him to go into medicine. Having excelled at the University of Earth, Australia, he opted to go into research instead of creating his own practice. The research that he had started as a student with one of the UEA researchers, Dr. Rue, was key in creating a more successful rate of acceptance in grafts and implants. While differing on the cause for their success, Dr. Rue was adamant that it was due to procedures being carried out in low gravity, while Dr. Brentworth felt it was more due to the low stress environment created by the stay aboard luxury ships while transiting to the low gravity areas. After they split, Dr. Brentworth continued his work and proved himself right through his patients. Their success rate and quality of life vastly surpassing any other medical practice. This encouraged Dr. Brentworth to start the Brentworth Care Centers, this would focus more on the lowering of undue stress and increase in patient comfort and satisfaction before, during, and after a procedure. Though this did come at a cost to Dr. Brentworth, having spent billions on the care model, he spared no expense, eventually branching out to other areas through Seoul and eventually the entire UEE. Dr. Brentworth, though extremely successful in proving and providing the top quality and care to all his patients and improving the quality of life through his very strict standards, did succumb to chronic kidney disease. Stating that he accepted the fact that he was really the only one he could trust to perform the procedure to extend his life, and therefore is why he never sought a proper treatment. The portfolio itself does go into detail on his life and the building of the care centers. It's a really well written piece, and I highly recommend to check it out. Link's going to be in the description. Wednesday, we got a roadmap roundup update and a lot of exciting information was announced here. First, we found that in the release view, they split the derelict reclaimer card into two due to vastly different needs for the two types. So the derelict reclaimer space mission card was added. Also listed in the release view, we saw additional Stanton Lagrange points, derelict reclaimer settlements points of interest, derelict reclaimer space missions, AI planetary navigation, illegal delivery missions, and Siege of Orison have all been set to committed for patch 317.2. This patch I would anticipate will be seen after Alien Week as we have seen no PTU for it yet and would not be surprised to see after or during Alien Week a straight to all backers PTU be launched for testing prior to going live as the anticipated time frame for live is by the end of June. On the progress tracker side of the roadmap, Salvage Vehicle Munching was listed as this will implement the ability to transform large chunks of metal salvaged from ships into a refinable material and set up the grinder system on ships such as the Vulture and the Reclaimer. So this has been added to the EUPU gameplay feature team schedule. Freight Elevators was also added and this implements the ability for players to load and unload physicalized cargo from the ships by conveying it cargo through the hangars, landing pads, garages, and docking collars. This has also been added to the USPU gameplay feature team schedule. We also saw a new player experience has been added to the new EU landing zones team schedule and will improve the initial 30 minutes of any new player experience and help them understand some of the game's basic features and how the verse works. 
It'll bring updates to many of the areas around the verse, such as landing zones, shops, habs, and even more. Player machine physical interaction was added to the actor's feature team, which is the implementation of animations that show players interacting with ships, controls, and items. The Aegis Retaliator base was added to start building, implementing, and balance the base model of the Retaliator. Of course, we have the full bomber in game, but the base brings in the versatile modularity portion of the Retaliator. As well as this could also be the beginning of the rework that will bring about the removal of the lower docking port as well as the port side elevator and overall rework for the interior. This is now going to be on the vehicle content EU team schedule. And finally, we saw the Anvil Crucible. Added in for building and implementing of this large repair and refuel ship, and this was a bit unexpected, but as many people were excited. This being moved to the vehicle content EU team schedule is huge news as a repair ship is definitely one many are looking forward to. Of course, we will not see the Retaliator or the Crucible until sometime in 2023. The addition of both of these is a great sign of progress in the game. Now, one thing that was removed due to the fact that there is a major focus on the salvaging, and that's room depressurization. This card was temporarily removed and will be rescheduled for a later date. I don't think many of us are going to worry too much over that one currently. But exciting news with all of these items being committed for 317.2 and the new items set up on the progress tracker. A lot to look forward to with this. The big question though is with all the new items for 317.2, what will we see as far as bug fixes for the ongoing concerns in 317.1? Time will tell, but I'm excited to find out. I have all my FS9s locked and loaded and ready to take on the Ninetales in the Siege of Orison. As mentioned last week, we did see the Squadron 42 monthly report posted to the RSI website as many if not most received the email last week on this, so check that out. Also posted was the June 2022 subscriber update. Last week we discussed the flare for this month with the vaporware items, and as posted in the subscriber notice, the Anvil Spartan is now the ship of the month, and we should all be seeing that in our ASOPs if you're a subscriber. You can also get last month's ship of the month, the Argo Raft, and it's available for pledge right now for all subscribers with the extended 12 month insurance for 125 US dollars. With Inside Star Citizen this week, we saw Nine Lives, a breakdown of Nine Tails Outlaw Gang. This covered their background and purpose and went into what criminal activity they are involved in, going into their expertise and their highly organized and trained members. It looks at the way they operate as well as their base of operations and why it is that they are a highly feared group. Going into Rudo's purpose and interactions with the group, it really looks at the group as a whole and how any player in the game has run into them at one time or another. They also set up the lore that's going to lead into the Siege of Orison event that we're going to be seeing with patch 317.2. After that, we go into the updates on the commodity kiosks with the update to building block system. These kiosks are used for several different functions throughout the TDDs and admin centers. They go through the function and changes to these items with the ability to now see items that will not be able to be sold at the current location, but will allow you to see that it does still exist there so you don't think there's a glitch. And in this way, you'll actually know what is on your ship and that it's still there and the shop just doesn't accept it. The appearances will be set up to look native to your location as well. These are some great changes that we'll be seeing coming down the line, though no official word on when we'll see it. I would imagine it will be with or just after the cargo refactor of 318. Friday took us into a new Star Citizen Live, and this week we meet the community team. Joining this week is Xylo, Galactica, Jake Acapala, Ulf K, and Chris. After the introductions, Galactica starts with wanting to address what kind of troll Xylo is and goes into a story of him messaging her in binary from the SC account to her personal account. After that, the team goes over what they are responsible for, such as front-facing communications. This will cover guides, spectrum, newsletters, monthly reports, and really anything that gets posted out and also covers social media as well. Xylo does mention the new community hub and that this is coming down the line. They'd really hope that it would be ready for Invictus, but it really needs more polishing before they're ready for it. They are very involved in all the different events throughout the verse, such as Day of Vara, as well as Luminalia, Stella Fortuna, and such. Ulf does go into the Luminalia event calendar and the trouble the handlebar created and that the experience will lead to improvements in the future. When talking about the Bar Citizen events, it was announced that through a new code redemption tool, they'll be starting with handing out codes at Bar Citizen events that will allow somebody to go on and redeem a code to get a ban you cube. They will be handing out these codes throughout the rest of the year at all their Bar Citizen events. 
Gamescon was brought up and it was released by Zylo as this team was not aware yet that they will have a presence, not a booth or a showroom per se, but will be present at the event. Apparently we did find out that Jared and Zylo share a lock on a famous bridge out there in Europe, but they were quickly disappointed to find out from Ulf that locks get cut off after several years to make room for more. After that bit of information, they go into the process of player feedback and how it moves from Spectrum over to the development team, as well as how they deal with the salt for many players. They go into the fact that though people can get angry, that this can have valuable information as people who are upset are typically going to be very passionate about what's upsetting them. They do address the fact that constructive criticism is far easier to use than having to peel back the layers of information to get to the core of why somebody's angry. Jake Acapella talks about the revamp of the Moby Glass as a feature he is most looking forward to, and Zylo brings up the fact that the opportunity to race within the verse has taken a front seat and has become a focus. Zylo also announced an opening position for the UK Community Manager position, which is going to be a new position that will be available in a few weeks. They did announce Alien Week will begin on the 16th of this month, and Jared also announced that next week's Inside Star Citizen is going to be completely dedicated to the brand new Merchant Man. The show itself was really fun and well worth a watch, and the link's going to be in the description below. I will say the singing at the end is well worth it, and the changing name tags of participants is also hilarious throughout the show. And this pretty much brings us to the end of this week's news, though, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. Lots of things are coming for us all to try out, and I'm very excited. Remember to get your entries in for the Anvil Legionnaire giveaway. Just subscribe here, leave a comment on any video to automatically be entered. And also you can double your chances by getting a second entry by following on Twitch where you can catch the stream every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you would like to help support the channel, check out the merch store and the Patreon as that all goes right back to provide for the giveaways to the community. Thank you to everyone for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and please be safe out there and we will catch you next time.